fish chips, my fishing chips, my Earl Lessesses, my Duchesses, my Princesses, and my Mistresses. On behalf of the mayor, Bill the Iron Man Steel, and the illustrious city council, it is my honor to welcome you today to this virtual Top Hat celebration. The Top Hat ceremony began in the early 1970s under Mayor John Buscarion. The event recognizes the importance of the seaway system and each year on behalf of the city of Port Colborne and the region of Niagara, the community welcomes and acknowledges the first ship passing through the Welland Canal. Although we cannot celebrate in person, it is important to acknowledge this historic day virtually. I know there have been quite a few socially distant activities the city of Port Colborne has planned, including build your own top hat craft and a social media contest asking you to share your favorite canal memory. And I hope you all participated. I wish the St. Lawrence Seaway health, safety, and happiness this season. By the powers invested in me as town crier, I declare today Top Hat Ceremony Day. Huzzah! 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 We're here this morning for the opening of the canal and for our blessing. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, I ask that you bless the canal, bless the ships, bless the men and women and all that travel through here. I ask that you watch over them and take care of them and let them have a very successful spring, summer and fall. In your holy name we pray, amen. Welcome to the Marine Exhibit Lighthouse, which is on the grounds of the Port Colborne Historical and Marine Museum. I'm here with the register for the captains that received the top hat. It's been going on since 2000, and it goes to the first ship that comes through Lock 8 that's down down on the Welland Canal. And we've been getting signatures from captains year after year at the Lock 8 ceremony. Well, we're doing things a little different today, and instead of going to Lock 8, we are going to present our captain here at the Marine Exhibit Lighthouse with the top hat. So captain, I'll be the captain of the Marine Museum and you can be our official top hat receiver. So a lot of people ask about our top hat. This was donated in 1999 from Jim Walter. It's one of over 2,000 artifacts in the Port Coburn Historical and Marine Museum's collection, and it's one of the only artifacts that comes out to play once a year. It is an 1890s Tress and London hat, and it is an artifact that is excited to be part of the community of Port Coburn. Hello, Port Coburn friends. My name is Jane Nye and I am a member of our city's Fair Trade Town Committee. And here are some of us this morning. We are here to greet you and to tell you that although we have missed the last two years of our outdoor community breakfasts, we are hopeful that we'll be back next year. Um, our outdoor breakfasts are celebrating fair trade products like coffee, tea, hot chocolate, and local items like Bodner's sausage, ADM Mills pancake mix, and Agape Valley syrup. So it'll be a fun time. Our Fair Trade Town Committee works.
to improve the livelihoods of artisans, marginalized artisans and farmers around the globe through ethical and fair trade practices. Amber's going to speak a little bit about that, but I wanted to remind you that you can find out what are the businesses in Port Colborne that sell or serve fair trade products by going to our Facebook page at Port Colborne Fair Trade Town. All right, over to you, Amber. Hi there, I'm Amber Miner, teacher at McKay Public School here in Port Colborne and member of our Fair Trade Town Committee here in Port Colborne as well. Just wanted to speak about fair trade during the current times. It's challenging enough facing the financial and emotional burdens of a global pandemic in a developed country. Imagine how much more challenging it would be for those in developing countries who are totally dependent on farming and handicrafts for their livelihood that have been significantly impacted due to the decreased demand. It's more important now than ever to support people in marginalized communities. We can support fair trade through visiting local businesses that sell fair trade items. And with the shift to online consumerism, we can support fair trade with just a click of a button. If you need gloves, there's a fair trade option for that. Need a mask? Who doesn't these days? Fair trade option for that. Fair trade earrings. The options are endless. And this pandemic has come with many silver linings, including becoming more aware and passionate about where our many purchases and food sources come from. We can continue to educate ourselves about this movement to be more conscious consumers. Students at Ontario's first fair trade school in Ontario's first fair trade town are keeping this movement alive and strong. Here are Catherine Boyder and Caitlin Wade, grade eight students at McKay Public School, representing the voice of today's youth and explaining why fair trade continues to be important to them. Hello, bonjour. My name is Caitlin and I'm Catherine and we are two grade 8 students at McKay. Ever since COVID started, it has been really hard as a student body to support the fair trade community. We used to sell fair trade foods and other items, and we also participated in school-wide activities. These activities were a great way for younger and older students to understand why fair trade is an important part of our society. Just because McKay can't financially support fair trade right now, it, you can do other things to aid the system such as supporting local businesses that sell fair trade products. You can also learn more about fair trade and you can educate others to continue your support. Because we are a developed country, we need to support our brother and sister countries who aren't as fortunate. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, on behalf of the City of Port Colborne, welcome to the 2021 Virtual Top Hat Ceremony. Even though we can't celebrate in person this year, we thought it only appropriate to connect with you virtually. Our Top Hat Ceremony is about our community within the Niagara region, coming together to welcome the first downbound vessel that enters the Welland Canal. Today, March 19th, kicks off the shipping season and our commitment to the marine industry. Port Colborne was founded as an important sailing port, later turning into the gateway to navigation when the Welland Canal was built and dissected our city. The Welland Canal is at the forefront of Niagara's transportation infrastructure. As always, we want Port Colborne to be an important location within the seaway, with the goal of ensuring marine-related businesses can flourish and young adults can look to the marine industry to make their living as our forefathers did many years ago. Through strong partnerships with those in the marine industry, we continue to create opportunities for marine-related development within the Seaway Trade Corridor and within our city. The City of Port Colborne takes seriously our responsibility to work with the marine industry to enable them to move their goods through the marine system in an efficient and economical manner. And we very much appreciate how the marine industry supports the city's economic growth. Even during a global pandemic this year, we saw numerous ships pass through the Welland Canal. And as you can see now, a number are docked here during the winter. Right now, this is the point where we will be presenting the top hat to the captain of the first vessel navigating through the canal. But instead, we want to send our very best wishes to all the mariners and the St. Lawrence Seaway for a safe and healthy season. Thank you. Thank you. 